Released in the 1950s, the Volkswagen Type 2 or the T1 was one of the most iconic bus you could ever see on the streets at the time. It was popular among the hippies and the campers for its convenient and spacious interior. Also known as the Transporter, Combi or the Microbus, the Type 2 is a forward control light commercial vehicle introduced by the German automaker Volkswagen as its second car model. Following and initially deriving from Volkswagen's first model, the Type 1 Beetle, it was given the factory designation Type 2. Excited already? But wait, before moving on to the contents, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon for more future updates. Without any further ado, let's move on to the video. The concept of this unique design was bought up by Dutch Volkswagen importer Ben Pon. He first sketched the van roughly on 23rd April 1947 when he visited Wolfsburg, intending to purchase Type 1s for import to the Netherlands. He got inspired by the design of the patent wagon and realized something better was possible using the stock Type 1 pan. In the first sketch, he proposed a payload of 690 kgs, that's 1,520 pounds, and placed the driver at the very front. The production of the initial batches had to wait as the factory was at capacity producing Type 1. Although the aerodynamics of the first prototypes were poor, with an initial drag coefficient of 0.75, engineers used wind tunnels at the Technical University of Braunschweig to optimize the design. Minor changes such as the split windshield and roof line into a V-shape helped the production of Type 2 achieve a drag coefficient of 0.44, exceeding Type 1's 0.48. The first production model, now designated as Type 2, rolled off the assembly line to debut 12th November. At that time, only two models were offered, the Commercial and the Combi. The Microbus was added way later in May of 1950, followed by the Deluxe Microbus in June 1951. An ambulance model was also added in December 1951 which repositioned the fuel tank in the front of the transaxle and kept the spare tire behind the front seat. It also had an addition of tailgate-style rear door. These features became standard on the Type 2 from 1955 to 1967 and in the first year of production, almost 9,541 Type S's were sold. Unlike other rear-engine Volkswagens, which evolved constantly over time but never saw the introduction of newer models, the Transporter not only evolved but was completely revised periodically with variations, retrospectively referred to as versions T1 to T5. However, only generations T1 to T3 can be seen directly related to the Beetle. The first Volkswagen of the Volkswagen Type 2 that came up with the splitting windshield or splitty among the modern fans was produced from 8 March 1950. Through the end of the 1967 model year, from 1950 to 1956, the T1 was built at Wolfsburg, which they changed it to Hanover. The first transporter used the 1100 Volkswagen air-cooled engine with 1,132 cc. That's 68 cubic inches, DIN rated 19 kilowatts, 23 PS, 23 NHP, air-cooled fault four-cylinder Bowser engine mounted at the back. This was modified and upgraded to the 1210 and 1195cc, that's 97.5 cubic inches, 22 kilowatt, 32 PS, 32 BHP in 1953. A greater compression ratio became the standard in 1955 while an unusual early version of the 30 kilowatt, 42 PS, 21 BHP engine debuted exclusively on the Type 2 in 1959. Any 1959 models that retain that early engine today are rare, since the engine was not continued further almost immediately. No spare parts were made available. One of the early versions of the T1 until 1955 were often known as the Barn Door, retrospectively known as the T1A since the 1990s. Owing to the huge rear engine cover, while the later versions had a slightly modified and extended roofline above the windshield, smaller engine bay and 15-inch road wheels instead of the original 16-inch ones called the T1B. From the 1964 model year, when the door back was made broader, the vehicle could be referred to as the T1C. In 1964, Volkswagen introduced an optional sliding door for the passenger and cargo area instead of the outwardly hinged door typical of cargo vans. A heavy-duty transporter was introduced in 1962. It featured a capacity of 1,000 kilograms, that's 2,205 pounds, instead of the previous 750 kilograms, 1,643 pounds. Smaller but broader 14-inch road wheels and a 1.5-liter 32-kilowatt, 41 PS, 41 BHP DIN engine. 
The launch of the new model was so successful that the 750kg 1.2 liter transporter stopped its production. In 1963, another car with 1,500 engine of 1,494 cc, 92.1 cubic inches was introduced as a standard equipment to the US market at 39 kilowatts, 53 PS, 52 BHP DIN with an 84 mm bore, 68 mm stroke and 7.9 is to 1 compression ratio. When the Beetle received the 1.5 liter engine for the 1967 model year, its power was increased to 42 kilowatts, 56 PS, 56 BHP DIN. The production of the 1967 model in Germany got stopped. However, the T1 still was manufactured in Brazil until 1975 when it was upgraded and modified with a 1968 to 79 T2 style front end and a big 1972 vintage taillights into the so-called T1.5, which was produced until 1966. Among the US enthusiasts, it is common to refer to the various models by the number of their windows. The basic combi or bus is a 11th window with a split windshield, two front cabin door windows, six back side windows, and one rear window. The deluxe model featured eight rear side windows and two rear corner windows, making it the 15 windows. For the 1964 model year, with a wider rear door, the back corner windows were discontinued, making the latter two, the 13 window and 21 window respectively, each of which carries the nicknames Samba and Alpine. The Volkswagen Samba, marketed as the Sunroof Deluxe, was the most luxurious version of the Type 2. They started producing Sambas in 1951. The Volkswagen were informally identified by the number of windows. This particular model has 23 and 21 windows, including 8 high windows in the roof. The 23 window variant had curved windows in the back corner. The Samba had biparting doors in lieu of the sliding door and could be ordered with a large fabric sunroof. The upper bodywork was finished with a standard paint, usually white in color, and the lower bodywork carried a contrasting color with areas separated by a decorative strip. The windows had chrome tables and the van had a more comprehensive dashboard than the normal T1. Its design was basic yet spacious, thanks largely to the rear-mounted engine. It matched well with the large, low sedans that were normal at the time, giving the van an alternative and rebellious image. Vans were often painted with extraordinary designs in bright colors, making them stand out on the road even more. The hippie van remains iconic today, thanks to being featured on the cover of albums by musicians such as the Beach Boys and Bob Dylan, and being used by fans of the Grateful Dead while following the band on tour. But most iconic of all, the music festival Woodstock, which was held in the summer of 1969, saw a lot of brightly painted vans transporting excited young crowds. The Type 2 and the 1947 Citroen H van are among the first front control vans in which the driver was placed on the top of the front road wheels. They started a trend in Europe, where the 1959 Renault Estafeta, 1952 GM Bedford CA, 1958 RAF 977, 1960 Comer FC, and 1960 BMC Morris J4 also used the theory. In the US, the Corvair-based Green Barrier, Passenger Van, and Chevrolet Corvan Cargo Van adopted the use of the back engine layout in the Corvair car in a similar manner that the Type 2 had utilized in the rear engine layout of the Type 1 using the Corvair's horizontally opposed six-cylinder air-cooled engine for power. Except for the Green Barrier, several 1960s to 70s Fiat minivans and the Mazda Bongo, the Type 2 remained different from the rest in being rear-engined. This was a limitation for the early barn door panel vans, which could not easily be loaded from the back because the engine cover took up the interior space. But generally advantageous in interior noise and traction, the Corvair pickup used a folding side panel that worked as a ramp onto the bed when opened and was called a ramp side. The Volkswagen pickup in both single and double versions of cab had a floor that was flat from front to back at the height of the engine compartment cover, which had the upper hand of a flat load floor but at a greater height. While the Corvair pickup floor stepped down in front of the engine compartment to a much lower load floor, which worked well with the unique ram side configuration for loading. The idea of microvans was also adopted by Japanese manufacturers. They introduced similar vehicles such as the Subaru Sambar, Nissan Caravan, and Toyota Light Ace. Decades after production of the Type 2 ended, in 2017, Volkswagen announced that they would be bringing an electric microbus based on the new MEB platform in 2022. 
With that, we've come to the end of the video. What do you think about the BW Type 2? Do let us know in the comment section and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We'll surely meet again in another video and until then, goodbye.